Good morning. I am Sakshan Ranoli and I am presenting a presentation on the topic interrupts of A085 microprocessor. It's a microprocessor. A085 is a microprocessor and now we are studying about what is an interrupt in a microprocessor. So what are interrupts in a microprocessor? An interrupt is a special condition that arises during a working of a microprocessor. As an example, if we are doing something in a laptop and we press the key at that time, that is a kind of an interrupt and we need to service that interrupt. Another example of physical life, if you want, we can check about the phone call. If we are playing a game in a mobile and the phone call comes, it is a kind of an interrupt and we have to service that interrupt. Either we want to take a call or not. So that is on our hand, but it is an interrupt. So interrupts are very important in a microprocessor. So what are the, uh, so what does microprocessor does when an interrupt occurs? It in response services it by going to the ISR of an interrupt. Okay, which is known as which we know as interrupt service D. The MUP checks for interrupts during every instructions. The microprocessor checks for interrupts during every instruction. When an interrupt occurs, the MUP first finishes the current instruction. At the time interrupt occurs, the MUP what the, what does MUP does? It first completes the current instruction which it is doing. Then it goes to service an interrupt. Then it go service an interrupt. It then pushes the address of the next instruction on the stack program counter we know that all the address are stored in the program counter which we have to do at that time so at the instant we are at a particular address in interrupt occurs it stores the next instruction the address of the next instruction into the program counter and it stores it on the stack it resets the int flip-flop so that no more interrupts are recognized what is an int flip-flop which we will study later in this slide at the end of the slide I'll show what is an INT flip-flop and how does it work in this case. Once an interrupt is organized, it resets the INT flip-flop so that no other interrupt can occur. Thereafter, the program controller transfers to the address of the interrupt service routine and the MUP thus executes the ISR. Then what happens? The program counter then and it transfers the address of the interrupt service routine and MUP then first executes the ISR and it then comes back to the next instruction and then service it. Okay. What are types of instructions? There are two types of instructions. Sorry, sorry. What are types of interrupts? There are two types of interrupts. One is software interrupts and other is a hardware interrupt. So now we'll study what are software interrupts first. Software interrupts. Interrupts which are initiated through programs. These are interrupts which are initiated through programs, either soft, which we know as software, and that are known as software interrupts. There are 8085 supports basically eight kind of software interrupts and those eight software interrupts are RST N to RST 7, RST 0 to RST 7 where N is from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so we can represent it as RST N. So what does this instruction do? When this instruction is caused, it causes a service routine to be called to the address N into 8. N into 8 here stands for the address of the ISR where the interrupt needs to be where the, interrupt, where the microprocessor has to send the interrupt to, has to send the, to work on the ISR. So, uh, n into 8. So, if RST1 occurs, we can see that if RST1 occurs, then 1 into 8, that is 8. And 8 in hexadecimal numbers can be represented as 0008. So, this is the address where we need to send that. So, these are the respective addresses for software interrupts. RST0 to 0000H. Similarly, RST1, 1 into 8. 8H, 2 into 8 that is 16, in hexadecimal 16 is represented as 0010H. So these are the ISR addresses which where we have the uh, where we have written the codes what we have to do when this kind of interrupt occurs. So similarly we can see RST 7, 7 into 8 that is 56 and 56 in uh, hexadecimal is represented as 0038H. So now, now we will see what are hardware interrupts. There are basically five types of hardware interrupts and these interrupts are initiated to the peripheral pins of the microprocessors. In the, micro, in the microsystem or microcontroller or microcomputer, there are very peripheral pins in which many of the peripheral devices are connected. As an example, I have told earlier, keyboard is a peripheral device and if we press the button, it is a kind of interrupt the process which we are doing at that microprocessor is doing at that time. So, it's a, it occurred from a hardware pin, that's why it is known as hardware interrupts. So, what are kind, how many types of hardware interrupts are there? There are five types of hardware interrupts. Trap, 
RST 7.5, RST 6.5, RST 5.5, and INTR. These are the five hardware in terms of 8085. So we'll study about that in detail later. First, let's see what are vectored in terms and non vectored in terms. In terms can also be classified into two categories by their address vector in terms and non vector in terms. Vector in terms are those in terms which have a fixed address for their ISR. And what is ISR? In terms service routine, as we have studied earlier. So, for example, trap is a vector in terms because its vector address is 0024H. We, we know its address, so it is a vector in terms. And what are non vector in terms? Whose address is not fixed. In terms that have a variable address for their ISR. They are called as non vector in terms. Example is INTR. INTR is a non vector in terms as we don't know its uh, address at that address. So it's a non vector address. Non vector in terms. How can an interrupt be prevented from occurring? How can we prevent a particular interrupt from occurring? This can be done by two ways either by masking them. Ma masking can be done through a same instruction which we are going to study later in this slide. I'll let you know there that how can we mask them. So either by masking a particular individual bits. So by masking we can stop particular interrupts to occur, not all the interrupts. Or by disabling all interrupts through disable DI instruction. So what is the difference between masking and disabling? There is a difference that by masking we can only stop particular interrupt interrupts. But by disabling, we can disable all the interrupts globally. No interrupt can occur if we disable them. Except we'll study about that and that only one interrupt can occur. Either there is DI or masking that is trap. Trap is the highest priority interrupt and it cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped. If it occurs, the microprocessor has to service it. So let's see something detailed in masking. As I have told you earlier, we can prevent an interrupt from occurring by masking its individual bit through same instruction. If an interrupt is masked, it will not be serviced. If an interrupt is masked, we cannot service it. So, what is the advantage of masking is that we can individually mask one interrupt or two interrupt or three interrupts. Which three are these? RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 we can be masked by this method. What is the difference basically that if we disable all the interrupts, we cannot get any interrupted guy. We cannot get any interrupt. But if we want that RST 7, RST 6.5 can interrupt, but RST 7.5 cannot. So what we need to do, we have to mask them. By disabling, we cannot do that. So we have to mask them. What are disabling? How can we disable interrupts? As I told you, by just simply DI instruction. Interrupts can be disabled through the DI instruction. If DI instruction is executed, Okay, so all the interrupts will be disabled. What does this instruction does? This instruction resets the IND flip flop and hence none of the interrupts can occur. IND flip flop we will study later in the slide. Don't I will show how this DI instruction can how the resetting of DI instruction can cause us the uh, disabling of all the interrupts. So if we reset that so int flip-flop gives us zero. So in this way, all the interrupts will be disabled, which we'll see later on. Once disabled, these interrupts can be re-enabled through EI instruction. So if we have something, if we can disable the interrupts, so we can enable also. But in this case, well, we how can we enable it? By pressing EI instruction. So by pressing EI instruction, we can enable all the instructions again by setting the int flip-flop example um, we'll study in details what are the hardware interrupts so earlier we just studied the names now we'll study in details the hardware interrupts uh, as earlier i have told oh, there are five trap rsc 7.5 6.5 5.5 and int so let's study trap what is trap trap has the highest priority as told it is edge as well as level triggered, hence the signal must go high and also remain high for some time for it to be recognized. This prevents any noise signal from being accepted. Trap is the only interrupt which is edge as well as level triggered. So there is a, this prevents noise to be accepted. It is a non-maskable interrupt as I have told it cannot be masked 